William Kissam Vanderbilt Sr. was the most prominent of the South Shore millionaires in the 1880s, and his wife, Alva, without a doubt, was the most ambitious. In fact, it was Alva who propelled the Vanderbilt family into the rarefied air of society's famous 400. But at what cost? Alva Vanderbilt was born on January 17, 1853, in Mobile, Alabama, to Murray Forbes Smith, a successful cotton broker, and Phoebe Desha Smith, the daughter of General and Tennessee Congressman Robert Desha. A year or so prior to the outbreak of the Civil War, Alva's father moved his family to New York City. As conditions in New York became increasingly unattainable for Southerners after the assassination of President Lincoln, Alva's father again decided to move, but this time circumstances forced the separation of the family since he went to England, where he continued as a cotton broker. The rest of the family took up residence in Paris, where they remained for four years before returning to the United States. Unable to regain the family's wealth and social position in the South, Smith chose once again to settle with his family in New York City, where he continued trading cotton while his wife established and ran a boarding house. Undaunted by the loss of social and economic status, Alva plotted to advance herself in New York's society. The instrument of her success was to be Consuelo Yingsnaga, a Cuban heiress and her childhood friend who socialized with the Vanderbilts. Consuelo managed to introduce Alva to the young William Kiesem Vanderbilt Sr. They married in 1875 and had three children, a daughter named Consuelo and two sons named William Jr. and Harold. In one masterful maneuver, Alva managed to revive her family's social position and financial status. Her father, who had by this time ruined his wealth worrying about the future of his family, was unable to attend the wedding, William Kiesam Vanderbilt Sr., due to his failing health and died 10 days after the wedding, but not before thanking Alva for bringing him peace of mind and encouraging her to care for the family. There can be little doubt that financial and social status considerations were major reasons for her marriage to Willie Kay, whose grandfather Cornelius's $94 million fortune was reputed to be the largest in America. From the beginning, it was obvious that they were mismatched. Even as a child, Elva was strong-willed, ill-tempered, and opinionated, traits that tended to intensify rather than moderate in later life. Willie Vanderbilt, on the other hand, was friendly, cultured, even-tempered, gentle, a loving father, and non-combative. Alva considered him to be a weak non-entity and marriage to be legalized prostitution. Alva's greatest pleasure in life was building and decorating mansions. Her first architectural adventure was the Vanderbilt's first vacation home, Idlehour, a large, shingled, Queen Anne-style mansion built in Oakdale, Long Island. Its construction was begun in 1878 and completed the following summer at a cost of $150,000, roughly $3 million in today's currency, the gardener's cottage, greenhouse, stable, entrance gate, and two gatehouses were also erected sometime after the completion of the mansion. Several alterations were made to the mansion, including the addition of a massive bachelor quarter before its destruction by fire in 1899. In 1879, Elva turned her attention to the creation of a new Manhattan residence. The architect was Richard Morris Hunt, a famous architecture at the time, and his home was to be more lavish than their Oakdale residence. Located at 665th Avenue on the corner of 52nd Street, the French Chateau-style mansion took 1,000 workmen three years and cost $3 million at the time to build. Alva finally had a Manhattan residence that was larger and more ornate than that of Mrs. Caroline Schirmerhorn Astor the acknowledged leader of New York society. While the Vanderbilts may have been collectively the wealthiest family in the nation, they had not been recognized by Mrs. Astor and hence were socially unacceptable. It was Mrs. Astor's opinion that one's fortune had to be at least two generations old 
and one had to be unencumbered by work and trade. Therefore, the Vanderbilts were scorned as nouveau riche and unacceptable for admission into New York's elite 400. In order to receive an invitation to join the elite 400, Elva threw an exclusive housewarming party for her new Manhattan mansion. Receiving an invitation to this party had become a major preoccupation among New York's socialites. Consuelo Vanderbilt, Elva's daughter, was a friend of Mrs. Astor's daughter, Carrie. Elva knew that Carrie had her heart set on attending their housewarming party and had been practicing the quadrille for weeks. But society rules decreed that since the Astors had not recognized the Vanderbilts, an invitation to the party could not be extended. Carrie was crushed and pleaded with her mother to do something. To restore peace in her home, Mrs. Astor had but one option, to recognize the Vanderbilts and thereby accept them into the ranks of elite society. Mrs. Astor was forced to extend an invitation to the 400 to the Vanderbilts, and the Astors would receive an invitation to the party. Alva had won, and correct social etiquette had been maintained they were now socially acceptable. Shortly thereafter, Willie Kay had been proposed for and had been accepted into virtually every significant social club and invitations to elite parties abounded. After William H. Vanderbilt died in 1885, leaving his son, William Kay, an estimated $65 million, roughly $1.9 billion in today's dollars, Elva started spending that money. She bought jewels, artwork, and the largest yacht in the world at the time, named after herself. Then she commissioned a grand mansion in Newport, Rhode Island, called Marble House, which was finished in 1892. She made herself notorious with her my way or no way attitude. She shocked her class when she did something unheard of in 1895. She divorced her husband. Divorces did not happen in Gilded Age high society. Separations did. But Elva was not common. She intended to do things her way, especially if she was the first to do so. The reason for the divorce was William K.'s supposedly adultery. Some sources claim he hired a woman to pretend to be his mistress, just to give Elva an excuse to divorce him, due to their marriage growing loveless. Elva's next hurdle was to marry her daughter, Consuelo, to a member of European nobility. Consuelo, however, was in love with Winthrop Rutherford, the 29-year-old son of a prominent and wealthy Knickerbocker family. Elva had decided that Consuelo was to marry Charles Richard John Spencer Churchill, the ninth Duke of Marlborough, who, although land poor, was a member of one of Britain's most prominent families. No amount of pleading by Consuelo could dissuade Elva, who kept her daughter under virtual house arrest and threatened to shoot Rutherford. During bursts of anger, Elva claimed she had had a heart attack and that if Consuelo didn't marry the Duke, she would be responsible for her mother's death. Willie Kay was of no help to his daughter, since he and Elva were divorced, just eight months before Consuelo's wedding to the Duke at Manhattan's St. Thomas Episcopal Church. It didn't seem like Willie was keen to come to his daughter's aid either, since he'd have to face the wrath of his ex-wife, something he did not want to deal with. Thus, Consuelo, young, impressionable, and without any protection from Alva's ambitions, was forced to yield to her mother's will. The marriage agreement reportedly cost Willie Kay $10 million at the time, putting the Vanderbilt family practically on the verge of bankruptcy. On January 11, 1896, Elva married Oliver Hazard Perry Belmont, who had deserted his first wife on their honeymoon to travel in Spain with a French dancer. The couple summered at Belcourt, Oliver Belmont's Newport mansion, which was across Bellevue Avenue from Elva's own mansion, Marble House. In 1908, her beloved OHP, just 50 years old, died prematurely at Brookholt, their East Meadow, Long Island estate, following an appendix operation. Elva was now an extremely wealthy woman, 
For in addition to Marble House, which she had owned since its completion in 1892, and the annual alimony payment of $100,000, which she had received as a divorce settlement from Willie Kay, she inherited Oliver Belmont's entire fortune, which consisted of several mansions and $10 million. Alva enjoyed setting goals that appeared unattainable and then surmounting all obstacles to obtain these goals. She was, without question, a major trendsetter of her era, being the first of her social stratum to marry a Vanderbilt and the first society woman to demand and receive a divorce and still retain her social position. She single-handedly propelled the Vanderbilts into high society and later married O.H.P. Belmont in a civil ceremony presided over by the mayor of New York City when clergy refused to marry them. She decreed that her daughter, Consuelo, would marry into nobility and did not hesitate to place a guard at her child's bedroom door on the wedding eve to prevent her from running away to her true love. Years later, she would testify to this action in order that Consuelo might obtain an annulment she became a major organizer and participant in the movement for women's suffrage and is still remembered today for her efforts. Thanks for watching. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more videos about your favorite wealthy families are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.